colonization also came with Christianity, colonial Christianity. So you find that from the 15th century, Christianity in the form of Roman Catholicism was to spread right across Africa, particularly also in Sub-Saharan Africa. So as, as the explorers came through to Africa, they also came uh, with them, uh, the missionaries. Unfortunately, there was a selective teaching of the scriptures by the missionaries. So the Christianity uh, that the black indigenous Africans were being exposed to was a censored Christianity. All right, we'll, we'll get to talk more about that just now. But however, in 1500 to 1650, you find that this is the time where the reformation happened uh, in the Roman Catholic Church. And this gave rise to the Protestant brand of Christianity in Europe. So you find that as we go to the 19th century, there was more intensive uh, influx of European missionaries into Africa. And now it was both the Catholics and the Protestants. And it reached its climax in 1885 with many Africans being converted to Christianity. But we also need to appreciate that around the 19th century, uh, there was also the proliferation of what is known as the comparative theology, which advocated for examining indigenous religious systems only to prove that Christianity is the only true religion among the multitudes of what turned out to be, in the last analysis, pseudo religions, Satan's empire. So African religion was then perceived as a pseudo religion. It was then perceived as an agent of Satan's empire. So this is the theology uh, that informed many of the missionaries that came to minister in Africa from the 19th century. So you find that early Christian evangelizers were therefore convinced that Christianity could not be based on traditional culture and that there was no real continuity between African traditional religions and the Christian message. So you'd find, and as you'd expect, this relates to a colonial thinking, or in other words, this led to a colonial theology with features such as domination, silencing of others' voices, and scenarios of subalternity. Sub so you find that the black majority within the colonized uh, communities had to convert to Christianity. This colony Christianity because their own traditional African religion was being denounced as that of Satan. So from 1885 up to 1945, you'd also need to appreciate that uh, during this season, there was also a rise of uh, the Pan-Africanism uh, movement uh, in the US. So from 1945, you find that this movement had also shifted uh, to Africa. And it was as a result of this movement uh, that the struggle for independence uh, within the African context uh, was born. So you find that consistently Pan-Africanism was to a large extent a vision that was promoted by the black elite. And this was to try to push and to initiate the whole fight for independence amongst Africa itself. So from 1945, we begin to see Africa struggle for independence. 